Hey guys, Hannah here from hannahsmilitaria.com and on today's World War II Connected video, I'm going to be showing you how to run a phone line through an earthbound network. The first part of this is explaining why it's so important to be able to do that. Let's say you have two phones set up at an event or a reenactment or even just at home for fun. If your phones are farther apart than your patch cable can reach, they're going to be connected through two wires at the top of your phone connecting to these two terminals. In those situations, this is totally fine because the phones don't have far to go. But in a real world wartime situation, Having both wires connected means you need double the spools, double the wire, it's double the weight, and double the work. The way Germans got around that was by running one of the connections through the ground. What they would do is take a spool of wire, connect it to the LA terminal, and that wire would have to go the length of the network. Let's say it's two kilometers. As opposed to running a second line, they would take a short length of cable, attach it to the LB slash E terminal, connect it to one of these ground stakes, and it would transmit the signal through the ground. On the receiving end of that line, the other party would also have a ground stake connected to the LB slash E terminal, and that would entirely bypass the need for a second length of wire. To practice this, we went out to the park, and let me show you what our setup looked like. able to tell but our network actually ran about 75 yards. We used this up spooler with a 17.5 centimeter collapsible spool filled with original German wartime light field cable. One thing I would like to make mention of is that this network can't be used in any earth that doesn't retain water. Rocks, gravel, desert, or sand won't function. Let's say you have to go a really far distance and in the middle of it is a sandy patch. You would have to go from single line to double line over it and back to single line on the other side. But I'm going to show you how to do that in a different video. For now, let's look at our grounding stakes. When you take it out of the carrier, you're going to see a bunch of holes down the side and a hole at the top. This is to help with the connection. If it doesn't seem clear enough or you're having a hard time hearing, all you have to do is pour water down the top and that's going to help ground this into the earth. Another thing I'd like to make mention of is that these are pretty easy to find, but a lot of them are ground dug or otherwise missing this terminal just like this was. They're easily replaced. I'm going to put a link in the comments so that you can order one should your ground stake be missing the terminal. Now it's well known that the oh. LA terminal is the one that's going to have the wire running the difference and the LE is going to go LB slash E is going to go into the earth and that has to do with the impedance. But after we set up our network properly today, we decided to switch our wires to see if it would make any difference at all. Because our network was so short, there was no change in the call quality. Another thing that we tried that was fun is about 20 years ago, my husband was told that when people didn't have ground stakes, they used bayonets. So we took two bayonets, stripped cord, wrapped it around the base of the bayonet, and just stabbed it into the ground. We found that when we made phone calls with the bayonets acting as grounding stakes, there was absolutely no change in the quality of the call compared to an original grounding stake. We also took it one step further and just dug a hole in the earth and put the line directly into the ground. Now, it wasn't clear and it wasn't easy to hear, but at 75 yards, we could absolutely hear each other on the other end of the phone with no metal conducting into the earth at all and just the wire. What we did experience was a little bit of feedback that I've never seen or had happen before, but I believe that's because that there was a construction site nearby, there were a lot of park lights set up nearby, and I think that, that was just giving us interference. In future videos, we're gonna go over switchboards 
and how to jump from a single line to a double line and then back. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button and I look forward to seeing any of your comments below. Thank you for watching.